stains of fascist leprosy struck the famous statue in Volgograd. The motherland is rotting. The furry patriots became worried. But the Glavsarabeshstroy Company, which carried out the restoration at a cost of 688 million rubles, reassured the public, saying that it was not fatal and would definitely pass. The acute question that struck the governor of the Murmansk region Andrei Chibis during a meeting with residents of Apatiti was not fatal either. The head physician of the Apatitsky Kirov Hospital assessed Chibis' condition as serious, but the governor was lucky the aorta was not affected. Putin's appointees began to be slaughtered right during meetings with the population. The Globinari are nervous and for good reason. On Friday night, Ukrainian drones attacked three military airfields at once in Yisk, Morozovsk and Engels. And to make it not so tragic, some drones were equipped with musical devices, with the hint, to die, so with music. The past week was full of doubts and hints. On the anniversary of the 75th anniversary of the creation of NATO, the defence ministers of the European member countries of the alliance were developing common tactics and strategies for behaviour in the new conditions, when there is less and less hope for US assistance. In 1961, during the Berlin crisis, when Khrushchev demanded the withdrawal of NATO troops from West Berlin, John Kennedy made assurances that the Allies could count on America's nuclear umbrella. Then Moscow blinked first, and West Berlin remained free. Today, as their strength is tested by the raging war in Ukraine, the unstable succession of power in the United States and the growing threat of Putin, the French and British nuclear deterrents are seen by Europe as vital. For Ukraine, good news about Allied assistance alternates with unpleasant ones. The US Congress will most likely postpone consideration of the Ukraine aid bill until a later date, and NATO countries may refuse to invite Ukraine into the alliance due to the threat of war with Russia. At the same time, Europe continues to intensively prepare for a clash with the Russians, understanding the growing appetites of the Kremlin, where they have already mentally taken both Kharkov and Odessa, and even held a victory parade on Kreschatik. And anyone who interferes with the implementation of the plan will receive his share of retribution. Macron's attempts to erase red lines were met with boos from a timid European political establishment. British Foreign Minister Cameron desperately vows to help Kyiv, while not allowing direct participation in the war. How Ukraine will defeat the Russian monster with much smaller forces, being burdened by total corruption at the very top, is not explained. It is increasingly difficult for Paris to maintain Olympic calm when Moscow is clearly preparing to sabotage the Summer Olympics, including incidents involving indoctrinated terrorist gangs. It is difficult to say what else the Kremlin should do, what kind of toadstool it should wrap up for civilizations so that it can finally take off its mask of concern and drain the swamps that emit a nuclear stench. The collective farm Fura Lukashenko has already stated that Belarus is actively preparing for war. Either he is hinting to Putin about a new tranche, or he really is itching. Issues of mobilization are being discussed in Europe. Is it time to return to the old methods of conscription or compulsory military service? Already at war, Ukraine lowered the conscription age to 25 from 27. Denmark extended conscription to women and increased its duration, Norway followed suit, and Sweden reinstated conscription back in 2018. The UK is discussing the creation of a civilian army to replace the unpopular idea of conscription, while in France Macron advocates civilian rearmament in the name of strengthening national unity. Germany, bruised by a complex of guilt and pacifism, is considering reintroducing conscription after abandoning it in 2011. And at this time the Kremlin continues to furiously link the terrorist attack in Crocus to the Ukrainian issue. Putin demands new mobilization, while Peskov lies about the absence of such plans. There is a lot of meat it's time to fry. The dish of victory requires cutting into it half the inhabitants of the cattle station, which is filled with anxiety. As the Kazan Galaita Minikhanov said after the arrival of the Ukrainian drone, wake up, guys, no one will protect you except yourself. That is, you can't ignore the Putin icon, and the carcass will have to be handed over to the state, if not everyone, then through one. 
and the rest should prepare for an increase in taxation at the request of workers. And get used to the idea that soon there will be nothing to eat or carry. The bald sovereign demanded to get rid of everything Western and produce it all ourselves. If you don't produce it, it means it's not really needed. We'll destroy what we can, but without the rest we'll trample on. Sanctions are looming, the ghost of a deficit is haunting the cave. The time of blouses and caftans is replacing the era of noxious shirts and alien shoes. Laptene-legged enlightenment is coming. It smells like nuclear goida.